Hi, welcome. Welcome to yet another episode under the webinar series of Get More from Malapram. Okay, and uh, just like any other series, any other event that we do, even before we proceed into today's webinar series, uh, let us let us actually first uh, uh, get into the real purpose for which we are actually doing this webinar. Okay, and the purpose of doing this webinar series, that is Get More from Malapuram, is only to provide is only to provide clarity such that you will have confidence on whatever the insurance policies that you are planning to purchase or which you already have and wants to review your policies okay so this is the very purpose and we want to instigate that kind of confidence within yourself with with all your insurance policies so that's the purpose with which uh, we are actually we have started this uh, uh, webinar series and this is the 23rd episode we are 22nd episode we are consistently doing uh, uh, here and uh, uh, okay and even before we get into the topic let us now look into the declarations uh, about uh, uh, the webinar series okay in this webinar series we do not represent any insurance company we don't represent any insurance company okay and at the same time we will be discussing issues regarding only insurance so no politics no movies nothing it's insurance and only insurance okay and we are not intended to criticize any person under this uh, webinar series uh, uh, but if at all it happens it is only by chance but we have never ever we have never ever intended or planned to do uh, criticize any particular person or an insurance company or a particular product okay right and the opinions which are discussed under this webinar series is only 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 personal and this can't be taken in as an evidence under any court of law okay so with these declarations let us now get into today's topic okay and the topic of today's webinar series are what are those 10 major coverages what are those 10 major coverages which are there under the cyber liability insurance okay the cyber liability insurance and uh, uh, in this particular topic we, we are actually going to see uh, the agenda like this so we'll be doing a little bit on the situation analysis and then after that we'll be we'll be doing uh, a discussion that is providing clarity for confidence okay this is the main section under which we'll be detailed discussing on the entire uh, uh, topic okay after that <clears throat> it is going to be a uh, think tank okay so this is the section under which we'll give a food for thought and wherein we will also try to conclude the entire uh, uh, webinar okay and after that we'll, we'll discuss on the action points which we have to take it up further okay so this is how the complete agenda is going to be and the purpose is only to create clarity such that you will have confidence in, in actually uh, with, with all your issues existing issues policies or if you plan to purchase an insurance policy you will have that kind of clarity in taking the decision okay with that let's get into the situation analysis okay have you have you ever seen uh, this particular situation in your life especially these days right are you able to see that okay may I know may I know what do you think these things are it, just, just type it in your chat box. Type it in your chat box. Yes, yes. This, this, this is this is the online payments which are actually happening, right? So these are the UPA payments which are actually happening. The Google Pay, the Phone Pay, the Paytm, the Amazon Pay. See, there are lots of lots of uh, uh, um, uh, UPA payment options which are available, and probably due to the political scenario which has happened. Or and also even because of the current lockdown conditions, everyone is actually going through going through only only the online payments. And to be on uh, to be uh, like an evidence for that, you can see you can see how the online number of transactions got increased in March uh, 2017. It is only it is only if you if you actually look into uh, the amount there, it is 2,391 crores which got transacted as online. And by the end of March 2018, it has become almost 24,172. Okay, a little, little less, a little uh, old data that is still 2018. If you actually see the number of transactions which are happening right now, 
it has actually crossed more than 1 trillion in India. Okay, right? That means people got used to the scenarios which are actually changing. Now you can see, have you, have you ever seen these kind of scenarios in our regular day to day activity? Right? People started interacting online more than offline. Probably because of the political scenarios, the pandemic conditions, the lockdowns, which has happened. This is what we are actually witnessing here. Doesn't it? Right? Okay. Have you seen this scenario at home? You know, shall I tell you something secret? More than, more than the number of people at home, more than the number of people at home, the number of gadgets which are actually there at home are actually more. Do you agree with me? If you agree with me, type yes in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for actually interacting with us. And we appreciate all the people who are actually interacting uh, um, uh, through the chat. And we, we thank you for uh, all your support because of you people. We are able to consistently do this webinar series. Uh, now it is in 22nd episode. Okay. So we have been consistently doing this uh, bi monthly webinar series. Okay. Thank you. Thanks you for interacting. Right. So we do all these scenarios here. Right. Okay. Now, have you seen the number of transactions now? The number of transactions got really, really, really increased. Okay. Now, the, the amount of transaction, the amount of money which is getting transacted is also been increased. Okay. What does this say? Every person, every person is getting bombarded from different angles. It could be your mobile, it could be your laptop, it could be your it could be your tab. It could be, it could be n number of communication channels which are actually happening, okay? And this is how a person is, has actually become, especially during this lockdown period, sitting at home. You know what, you know what this situation is actually leading us to? We all feel we are good at home, we are actually doing the entire transactions online, and, and we are able to do the regular day-to-day -day work, the payments, the trash, transactions absolutely smooth, doesn't it? What do you know? What is that risk which we are facing? This is how we are actually sitting on the bubble. A lot of things, there are a lot of risks which are actually involved when we are actually doing the online transactions. But we are, we are really not aware. This session, this session is only to help you to understand what are the risks which are involved in the complete online transactions which are happening and which is actually increasing by 10 folds on every second. That's how it is actually increasing. Okay, so don't be complacent. Okay, so this is a situation wherein you are not aware of what exactly is happening, especially, especially when, when the entire family is involved in the online transactions. Earlier used to be a situation wherein probably only the head of the family is actually doing the transaction. But now you see your kids doing online payments, your kids purchasing online, right? Your, your, your spouse, your entire family is actually doing the online transactions. So, so this has actually increased. This has actually increased even more risk for everyone. So don't be complacent, okay? Be aware and then know how to handle the situation if it has to turn up. Okay, with this, with this, let us now, let us now enter and then see the situations in which the entire family is facing the conditions. Have you ever seen any email coming into your inbox which says like, now, uh, why don't you just authenticate uh, your account? Okay, have you seen that? Have you at least even seen have you at least even seen a situation wherein, wherein um, you got you got an email stating that you have won a lottery and uh, there's a UK based uh, bank which is actually giving you the money and you have to pay some deposit or give your online bank accounts. Have you ever seen that? If yes, that means people have already tried taking away money from you. Okay, right? If, if these are the scenarios which are actually happening, okay, this is the kind of mails that you are actually getting, right? And at the same time, there is, there is an authenticated mail from your bank, which is coming to your email box or from your very well-known person stating that like, you, know, you are actually liable to pay some money 
or with you, you, your bank details are actually being used of someone and then now uh, uh, there is an authentication requirement so um, uh, or if your, your bank account has become dormant and now you have to give all those details uh, um, authenticated in the email have you ever seen such kind of mails coming into your inbox okay. and when you click on the link it actually doesn't go to the same it actually goes to another account another website which actually looks similar to your known account have you seen that this is called as phishing and the spamming of emails when you go and um, click on that and it, it takes you to another site which looks like similar to your own um, a regular login account, right? In this kind of things, okay. all these things are happening, okay. And at the same time, when you go and enter, enter the details on the site, have you seen? Have you seen that you are automatically your system pops up your email, your mobile, your contact details, everything automatically pop up into the uh, situation, into, into the form in which you are actually filling up. Right, and, and also even when you want to log in in your mobile, into your social media accounts, your automatically your username, your password is automatically pops up. Does this thing happens with you and your family members? Means you are actually at risk. Okay, now now so that means that means somebody somebody is out there is actually watching you and is actually trying to steal the information from your gadgets and you we are, we are all we are all complacent about this we don't know what exactly is happening on the back end we only look into the screens and we just we just see in the details right so this is this is the situation what we are in it's even more riskier it is even more riskier because now the children are now used to the online classes and they are actually doing the online transactions Right? So how shall we do this? Okay, so coming to now the major section. The major section is creating the clarity for confidence. Okay. Now this this section is, is, is the main section wherein we'll be discussing the entire things of the webinar um topic. Okay? Now, so we should know how we should know how to handle the situation. There's a very simple three step uh, strategy what we are actually recommending to everyone to handle it. Okay. And the three step strategy is the first one is prevention, the second one is protection, the third one is cure. So, prevention, protection, and cure. How can we do this towards our cyber liability? Let's now look at the first step that is about the prevention strategy. The prevention strategy never ever close a browser directly in your mobile or on your system without logging off. The first preventive strategy never leave your entire details of login into the system. Okay? And at the same time, do not save your usernames and passwords. Never ever do that. I know it's really tough, but the tough thing comes with, with actually a little secured uh, situation because the more you remember your usernames and passwords, then the, then your, your your risk of actually being attacked by somebody else has actually reduced to half. Okay, and I I'll tell you I I, I tell you the situations uh, we used to be where our parents and the grandparents uh, uh, they used to remember the entire telephone numbers of all our relatives, and they used to you remember. There used to be a phone book near the telephone line at home, right? Now, do you still remember all the numbers? We don't remember. Rather, we don't remember even our own usernames and passwords in different sites. Even in our social media, it automatically pops up. And sometimes, like even if you just remove the cache and everything and reinstall the software, now you want to log in, you don't know what to do. You, we, we always go back to that, forgot the password and then get the mail in your email, then open it, open it, open it up and then do the login once again. This is how pathetic we have actually become. Okay. Now, 
I I suggest at least if you don't remember all the phone numbers, that's still okay. But at least remember your own usernames and passwords of your bank accounts, your emails, and most most uh, secured and sensitive information wherever it is there. Have everything remembered. And whenever you you actually key key in completely, then what happens? It actually becomes a habit for you. Okay, and this is the best strategy how you can reduce the cyber liability. Fifty percent of the risk is reduced because of one single thing: remembering your usernames and your passwords, and don't do it as an autofill in the entire gadgets. Okay, right? Let's get into the topic now. Right? So, so prevention strategy: we have seen never close the browser without logging off. Then the second one is do not save your usernames and passwords in the browsers. And have SMS alerts. Even in the banks, few of the banks they actually charge for SMS alerts. But it's worth it. Even if they charge it, it's worth it. You have to use the SMS alerts because that gives you your OTPs. There's also alert like the, even if the payment goes off from your bank account, you will get to know, right? So use those SMS alerts, right? And always mention, always mention the reason. If you are actually giving uh, a scan copy of your uh, identity, like uh, probably your Radar card, your passport, your PAN, you mention the reason on the scan or on the on the photocopy what you are actually submitting. The reason, mentioning the reasoning, will actually reduce the identity theft crisis by almost almost ninety percent. This is what we recommend. If, now, do not do not respond to the unknown communication. It could be an unknown e SMS which comes up. It could be an unknown email which comes up. It could be an unknown message which comes up in your uh, uh, social media, or it could be someone requesting for uh, um, getting connect. Okay, don't approve the connect, right? Okay. So unless you verify the person, unless you verify the details. Don't even authenticate or even click on any of these communications. Okay, so this is another one, and you can never tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. How many? How many of you have? Uh, um, uh, let me just ask you this question. How many of you got an SMS or an email stating that you have won a lottery? Can I tell you one thing? How can you win a lottery in which you have never even participated? But still, we see so many people clicking on that link, getting in there, giving up all the details. Even I've seen the cases wherein people pay some money to get that amount into their bank account. How foolish it could be, right? Okay, so so we we see all those situations, right? So you can never win a lottery in which you have. Never ever participated, isn't it? Right? Okay. So keep your keep your bank customer care number always handy because if you get any uh, spurious uh, activity which happened in your bank account and you got an SMS, you should know whom to contact. You should not search like you know what to do, what not to do when when you actually there in the situation. So you should have all these things already ready with yourself and especially. Keep it with your family members also, okay. And do not accept the friend request without knowing the person. Keep your identity a little safe on the social media. This is the prevention strategy. But how many? But how many of us still, even after maintaining so many preventive strategies, do we still get those kind of mails? Yes. Yes, if yes, just, just just type yes in the chat box. Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot for participating. We still get the spurious uh, emails, the spurious calls, the spurious SMS, right? We still get those details, even though we have all the preventive strategy. What is that we need to do? Yes, we need to get into the protective strategy. Okay, now let's let's look into the protection strategy. The protection strategy here, if you look at, you have to install all the antivirus in all the gadgets at home, especially with 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 the gadgets which your kids use, your tab, your mobile, your laptop, any of those gadgets. Because of these online classes which are going on, 
Now, every child is now used for online uh, activity. So you need to have you need to have the antivirus installed installed in the entire entire gadgets at home. Okay. Now the second thing is having the antivirus is not just enough. Let it be updated. Let it be updated with the latest patch because there are latest things which are coming up. There is a lab which goes on. They try to improve upon the security functions, right? So all these things, all these things need to be updated. Got it? Got it? People might say, okay, I have a system, but it doesn't have a uh, licensed uh, software. Please, purchasing a small license is worth it than losing a lot of money from that. I suggest have a authenticated software in your systems. Right? Okay. And and don't be after the other. Uh, the software which comes with uh, free, because free always comes with a risk. Okay, okay. So restrict, restrict your your user profile access, your profile access to uh, other social media. So make it private, make it private, and make it available only to the people whom you know and whom you authenticate to see your profile. Right. Okay. So this is one, and never give, never give your location updates. In, I've seen many of the people. Uh, there, are, there are people who, who actually you know put up their location access uh, are so active. Like you know, when they uh, wherever they go, like you know, their their location is updated on the social profile. Why? Why do you want to do it? See, you don't know who is actually watching you. You don't know who is actually tracing you. And there was a situation which actually happened, uh, and this happened. Uh, um, a little bit, uh, I think uh, this happened in two months back. Um, wherein, wherein uh, um, a person, a person, uh, she used to uh, update her location uh, on a regular basis on the social media, and so one of uh, her friend was actually tracking it. Okay, and she actually planned to go for a mountain trekking alone. Okay? She planned for that, and I don't know why, but people give this updates on the social. media. And this guy was actually tracking her. You know what he did? He traced her, he went to that location and he molested her. Why do you want to get into those situations? Why do you need to update your location on the social profile? It's not required, you know. It's it's like a, you are giving away your your entire identity, your entire uh, uh, no, um, your sensitive information to everyone. Does it really say? It's like you you're giving away uh, the key to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the person who wants to do a theft at your home, right? Take care. Be very conscious on what you want to do, right? And uh, uh, so never give away your uh, location uh, updates, right? And while while installing the apps, while installing the apps, especially on the mobiles, you be very clear, very clear on. What are the access that you are trying to give? Okay. And those access, those access, why do you have to give the location, the photos, the addresses, everything to every app which you are actually installing? Right? And always install the app only from the authenticated sites like Play Store or, or from Apple, it's an Apple Store, right? Never ever you know, just accept and install the uh, software which is not uh, uh, authenticated. Or it is just come up in your email and then you just uh, you know, download it and then install it. Never do that. Okay. And if at all, if at all, uh, all these things are still happening and still you want to have a protection coverage, yes, that's where you need to have the cyber liability insurance. Okay. Now, what, what is what is cyber liability insurance? Okay. If you look into the cyber liability insurance policy, there are there are majorly major that. 10 coverages which are being given under this uh, cyber liability insurance. Okay, let's look into what are those 10 things. Okay, the first thing is identity theft. If at all, even after taking care of all the security measures in place, still, still, there are some people, there are some smart guys who know how to take away your entire identity. If that happens, okay, all the expenses which are incurred due to the misuse of personal information over internet 
in, in, in actually procuring the loans or the credit instruments. They use your identity, the process, and they get back the money. They do that. We have a number of cases which got which got filed under the uh, cyber uh, crime uh, department of uh, um, police. You can actually go and check it out. Many of them are, are, are also there on the Google. Just go and type it out there and then see what are the latest things which are actually happening. Recently, I've seen, uh, if you just go and type it on the Google, I think three days back, there is one doctor, one doctor in Bangalore whose identity got theft. And then these people have actually even asked for ransom money. Okay, and the worst part was even after paying the three lakh rupees, he did not even get back his identity. Okay, right? So that's how the risk is going to be. The identity theft can be covered. Okay, and and also because of these things, like you know, um, like you might be refiling uh, your identity uh, uh, thing, like uh, how could be your passport, your father, your pan copy, right? So reissuance of all these documents, what are the costs which is incurred? There could be a notarizing uh, expenses which, which, which you would have actually incurred, right? All these expenses can be covered by your cyber liability insurance. And because of, because of these uh, um, mal, uh, uh, things which are actually happening, if you lose your uh, regular income or somebody has actually removed from your uh, office, right? Or because you are actually going after all these situations and you are unable to earn your daily income because you are not going to your office or to your business. All that liability can be covered, can be covered under your cyber liability insurance. This is the first thing, right? Okay, the identity theft. Now, the identity theft, what are the other things that can happen because of this? Okay, they can gain access to your bank account, they can apply loans and credits. And, um, uh, and open and even an insurance accounts, right? Okay, and file a tax refund on behalf of you, right? And obtain a driving license, passport, or even immigration papers, okay? Create a new utility accounts and they can use up your bank account details, right? And get medical treatment done on your health insurance policy. They can get the entire treatment done on your policy, okay, right? And then assume, assume, uh, or, or give your identity in a place uh, um, where they are not supposed to give it, like on social media, right? And also, if 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 they got caught up in any illegal uh, um, activities, right? But identity, what they give is your identity, okay? because of it, even even police can come and they can put you behind the bars, right? All this risk, all this risks can happen. And this identity crisis can be covered under your cyber liability policy. Okay, right. And the next thing is unauthorized transactions. Okay, because of the unauthorized transactions which which can happen. Okay, uh, they can use up your entire uh, uh, bank account details. They can get into your bank account online. They can also even uh, spoof your uh, SMS, uh, your uh, mobile account, and then get all your email, all your SMS alerts and sometimes even uh, these, these banks also give the OTP on your mobile and also on your email. If your email account is being hacked by them, then it is much easier for them to just get into your bank account and then do the unauthorized transactions. Because of which you can you can just lose the entire money. Okay, because of these financial losses, you may also even uh, uh, you you may also even not able to pay your EMIs on time. Okay? You might you might not um, also there could be a legal obligations which can also even come up, right? And because of which there could be a loss of your income, loss of wages which can happen. All these things can be covered under your cyber liability insurance, okay? right? And at the same time they can use your identity and do some mischief on the social media or they can post some wrong information with your identity or they can open a new account on your name they can post as if you are doing the entire nonsense on the social media and they can post some vulgar and unnecessary things onto the social media in somebody's page those people can can actually come and sue on you this is a possible job okay so 
all those expenses which are incurred, the legal expenses, are it to be like no, because you are completely depressed and now you have to go to a doctor or a psychologist uh, uh, support is required to take care of yourself at that moment, even those expenses are being covered under the cyber liability insurance. Okay, so all the crisis management could be taking care of legal activities, uh, legal things, or could be how to uh, you know, prevent, uh, not prevent, uh, how, how to reduce the impact or even removing the complete impact. You may have to even hire, hire a technical expert, an IT expert, right, who will, who will help you to remove the entire content. Okay, so that kind of crisis management, the cost is involved. It's a huge cost. You may have to apply the professionals in getting your work done. All that cost can be covered under your cyber liability insurance. Okay? And when you are actually going out, going out on all these activities, you might not even focus on your business, nor on your work. So probably that will lose income for you. When that can be covered under cyber liability insurance. So the reputational injury can be taken care of. Okay? The things which are not covered are the moment you take the policy, the first 30 days, they will not cover this particular reputational injury. And at the same time, if a journalist is been intentionally doing any wrong reputational injury for you on the social media or elsewhere, then even that is actually not covered under this policy. Right? Okay? Got it? Now, let's see the next one. That is cyber bullying. Okay, people sending a threatening notes. People sending sending uh, something uh, uh, a spurious call, and uh, um, they might even say like, no, um, uh, if you are not coming over here, then we'll kill you, or you know, for or you have to give us some ransom money, right? Okay, all the crisis management, all that legal act. Probably you may have to even put up a detectives to actually find out who are those people. All these expenses. Can be covered, can be covered under your cyber liability insurance. Okay? And even if you lost your income, can be covered because of cyber bullying. And to, to actually like now, but to actually have an um, evidence on that, you may have to even install or you may have to even go to some cyber experts who can actually or a forensic expert, right? Who can actually get you the real proximate cause from where it actually got uh, started the risk got started okay so they do it and it, it actually involves a lot of cost all this cost all this cost is can be taken care by the cyber liability missions okay right and um, cyber extortion oh, this 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 actually uh, we have seen uh, uh, one week back, uh, wherein uh, a person, a person who is a banker, who is a banker, his entire system, his entire system got uh, um, extorted, and then the complete, uh, uh, the username, the password, whatever you do, his his system is not opening up. And then he receives an uh, email on his mobile, an SMS on his mobile, and then a call stating that like you know, your complete uh, information is actually with us. We have all your Aadhaar, your uh, your bank account details, everything, and these are the details which we have. This is the amount of money that you have in your account. And if you are not giving us the ransom money, then we are going to use this, and then we, we will make sure that you are actually getting bullied down. Okay, and they, they are not giving you access to this uh, uh, sensitive information. Okay, and somebody has actually taken even in. Uh, very uh, personal photographs, personal photographs uh, uh, with their friends, right? And those things actually got been, uh, um, uh, been extorted. And then uh, the people have been asked for ransom money. If you don't do that, all these photographs will be posted in the social media. And we have all the access to your social media. This is how, this is how. And you know, people have actually paid money. We have seen people paying 75,000 to get their uh, complete system you know, uh, um, uh, removed from the hacker. Like they, they actually could be able to uh, uh, restore, restore almost 75%, but still some data got uh, uh, corrupted 
and they may have to go even they have even gone for data recovery uh, situation uh, person and they help them to recover i think almost 95% they could able to recover the data okay so the cyber extortion can also be covered can also be covered under the cyber liability policy the ransom money which is paid what are the expenses that you got involved and even the money even the income which you lose because you are actually going after all these activities of preventing or stopping and also even concluding the complete cyber extortion these things can also be covered under the cyber liability extension and there is a malware intrusion which happened into your system into your mobile into your network and it is actually you know uh, taken out the complete data and uh, the data is been exported or is been transported to another location where it has been stored and they are actually using the entire money entire details in, in doing the, um, the the financial transactions online which you just got to know and you don't know what to do okay the modern day theft is has actually you no know, gone into a different scenario altogether you know there is nothing like you no know, people coming in breaking your window or breaking in your doors and then getting into it into your uh, uh, house breaking up the locker no not none of these things are actually happening it's just like you now we we have become so complacent we don't know what is the risk that we are actually facing you no know, people the people are so complacent like people are you people are just getting into your systems they are taking away all your data I've seen, I've seen people storing their uh, usernames and passwords in email. The email, if if they got hacked, they have all your details, right? If any such malware intrusion happens, it could be, it could be a virus, it could be a torrent, it could be a spyware, any number of things, right? The 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 money, the intensity, the time, you know, uh, the cost which is involved, right? Okay. And the depression in which you get in, and the treatment which is required even for those depression, everything, everything can be covered under the cyber liability policy. Okay, right? Uh, it it is a data restoration cost. It is one of the major costs uh, which happens when somebody yeah. has actually you know extorted your uh, system and they have to you know take out your system. And uh, I've seen a um, few of the software companies. Who paid in lakhs to get their servers you know, uh, restored back the data? We have seen those situations. Okay, and there are some specialized experts who actually do these particular services, and it comes with a cost. That cost can be covered. Okay, so that cyber extraction cost can be covered, right? And the malware attack, all these things, all these things which are involved wherein wherein we have to recover the data. All that cost can be covered under the cyber liability insurance, okay. right? And the forensic cost, well, this this forensic uh, uh, reports are actually uh, um, really required because uh, that is the only situation. This is the only way how we can prove that somebody else has stolen your identity or stolen your data or actually did a uh, no. Uh, um, uh, another is the transaction and this is possible only if you have a forensic um, report which comes up. and forensic report comes only with a cost and there are some specialized people who, who can only work on this and it always comes with a cost this cost can be recovered can be recovered through the cyber liability policy it could be a cyber extortion the mall malware attack or it could be a fraudulent transaction all the cost which is involved in getting the forensic uh, report of what are the events which has actually happened can be covered. Can be covered under the cyber liability insurance, okay. right? And um, the consequential losses, like uh, I've, I've seen people like you know, um, uh, because because a, um, a very personal information got posted. Um, it, it's it's an unauthorized uh, uh, kind of in uh, uh, access to an intimate intimate uh, uh, photographs which have been posted on the social media. So the next person has actually you know uh, put up a case like now this guy has actually done this all nonsense. Okay, but it has got to know that it has been done by another account. 
and it is because of which there was an uh, legal case which have been filed and uh, so there's a lot of cost which is involved even to to get back uh, or uh, not to, make, um, to get back that particular uh, um, case withdrawn okay there's a lot of expenses which got involved and not maintaining the minimum balance in the bank account because of which bank will also put a charge on you and not paying the emis on time okay there's a legal uh, uh, thing coming on to you okay so all these things all these consequential losses can also be covered under the cyber liability insurance okay right and the legal expenses the legal expenses which involved like uh, um, but to, to get the legal expenses uh, recovered from the cyber liability policy we need to first inform it to the insurance company okay and uh, the first and foremost thing whenever such events happen the first and foremost thing we need to inform we need to inform the insurance company within 72 hours that's the first criteria okay because they know like now they know how to mitigate the loss right and at the same time it could be an initial consultation with the uh, lawyer right or it could be a pursuing or a defending legal uh, actions which are required to actually reduce the liability right or it could be even removing the erroneous criminal or a civil charge you have to remove that civil charge also it requires a lot of cost all this cost can be covered under your cyber liability policy okay. and uh, the situations in which the claims are not payable is not payable only if you don't intimate it to the insurance company number one okay and if it is done intentionally is not covered and if there is a delay is not covered if there is any pre-existing incidents and there is a fallback consequential loss which happened okay that means the proximate cause is before you have taken the policy then also it is not covered right and if there is any unexplained loss suddenly i just lost money from my bank we don't know how if it is an unexplained thing it's not covered right and any physical injury to the person or a property damage is not covered right and any non-personal uh, claims like uh, uh, that means it, it is actually gone to um, uh, um, uh, where, where in uh, like uh, it could be like you know, some some uh, something happened some accident happened so uh, because of which uh, uh, there is a um, property which got damaged so those kind of liabilities cannot be covered uh, under the uh, cyber uh, liability insurance okay right and you need any assistance you need any assistance uh, in actually knowing more details to know how uh, to actually get your cyber insurance uh, um, uh, administered for you or uh, implemented for yourself along with your family members you are always there this is our QR code you can just scan it or you can actually dial up this number it is 7569-645-645 this is the number on which me and my team we are available to help you and assist you in getting the best cyber liability policy which is available in the market and let me tell you let me tell you we do not represent any one insurance company whatever is the best is what we recommend okay and the whole purpose of this series of get more from malapuram is only to provide you clarity such that you will have confidence in actually purchasing any of your um, insurance policies okay and with that we'll get into our next session that is think and thank right okay now we have seen the prevention we have seen how we can protect ourselves now if say suppose if say suppose there is there is something which has already happened the situation has already happened what is the next thing that we need to do yes it's about the q strategy and how can you cure? Like if somebody has, uh, let's let's have a situation. Let's have a situation wherein a people, a person, uh, uh, bank account uh, details got been uh, um, fished out, and then uh, um, somebody has done an unauthorized transactions online. This is huge lots of money which happened. Okay, what is that we are going to do? Right, that's the cure strategy. The cure strategy, what the one which uh, we are actually recommending, and this is the best one is. There is something called a citizen financial cyber fraud reporting and management system 
This has been started by the government of India. And you know what is that you need to do? Just dial up this number. Just dial up this number that is 155260. 155260. Call up this number. Report it immediately. Any cyber attack which happened, it could be your identity crisis, it could be your identity theft, your unauthorized transactions, or somebody has actually, you know, did a uh, malified um, uh, um, identity crisis, or it could be any of the cyber liability which can come up. Just dial up this number. It is one double five two six zero. I repeat once again. It is one double five. 260 just dial up this number it's a 24 by 7 helpline number wherein you can actually just report this your this cyber liability okay and this is the website it is cybercrime.gov.in this is the website on which you can also go and report it okay this is the ministry of home affairs uh, uh, indian government site and uh, they have been doing extremely good we have also seen the situations when I think three days back they have actually even uh, uh, found out uh, within I think this was within three hours of they got information they could be able to get back that money because you know what happens um, this, in the cyber crime uh, whenever they actually do the transaction they just transfer this money from one bank account to the next bank account or some mobile wallet so the money has not been withdrawn from that particular account. So the faster that we actually intimate, the better they will act and they will stop. And you know what, what, what they will do? They will put up a red flag on that particular account when it has been transacted and that bank account is getting completely sealed. So they cannot do any other transactions, right? And if say, suppose even from that bank account, it has been moved to some multiple bank accounts, the flag will automatically travel and even those bank accounts will be seized by our cyber security people. Okay, and that's how they could be able to recover the money and they could be able to trace out to the people who actually did that transactions through, through with the IP address. Okay, and this, this um, department is actually working the National Cyber Crime Reporting uh, Portal is really helping out the people. Okay, and uh, so uh, this is the uh, address on which uh, you can actually go and uh, see the details. And the best part what I found here is I have given enough of information on how to safeguard yourself, your family, how to help your children to know how the phishing can happen online and how these malwares will come through, your, through their games portal and then get into your details. Because all our usernames, passwords, everything is also there even on all the mobiles at home, all the, all the gadgets at home, right? This actually puts us in some more risk. There's a lot of information out there, out, out there in the resources in this page. I recommend everyone to go out on this site, sit with your family and do all the uh, learnings, okay? So, we need to have a happy family and the happy family need to be protected and how do we need to do that okay so the action points this is the last section wherein now we'll discuss on the action okay? the action points which we need to follow up to protect ourselves from the cyber threats from the cyber attacks because we are all paid online because of the changing circumstances okay? the first thing is discuss discuss with your friends and family members but what are the different scenarios? What are the different ways how the cyber attacks are actually happening? Okay, explain them, enlighten them. Okay, the more they get to know about these details, and especially the children, okay, because now they are absolutely going online and they're doing the entire transactions, their classes are online, the payments, the fees payments, everything, everything is actually even, even people learning the dance is also online. They are now more, more, more uh, online. Uh, um, um, uh, trans they are doing more transactions than any of us. Okay, so they need to know how these attacks will happen. It's okay, right? And at the same time, install the antivirus on all the gadgets at home. I recommend it. Might be a little cost, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Go for some better one. Pay some that additional thing. 
pay the license, get the licensed version, install it. Right? It's worth it. Right? Okay. And discuss with your insurance specialist about the cyber liability insurance. Call, call up your insurance specialist, sit with him, have a breakfast or an evening tea time. Then just call him up and then discuss on the cyber insurance and get all the details from him. But if you need any help, you need any help, you are always there. You can dial up this number. It is 7569-645-645. You can dial up this number. We are always there. We will help you. Okay. And then make all these details available with your family members in any of the eventual conditions, especially the, the helpline number that is 155. 206 right it is 155 260 okay so just this just uh, keep this number readily available uh, uh, with your family members right okay it is 155 260 that's a helpline number for the cyber liability okay cyber attacks if it happens that's a helpline number right and uh, then you need further more assistance your insurance support is always there and we are always with you. Just scan this QR code. It will take you to a link. Just click it up. And it's a secured link. Let me just tell you. It's a secured link. Okay. So go there. Click up. Give your details. Me and my team will come back to you. And will help you out in knowing. And how to cover yourself and your family. From the cyber attacks. With the cyber liability insurance. Okay. With that. With that we come to the end of today's uh, uh, session. Um, that is 10 major coverages under the cyber liability insurance. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for joining us on this uh, webinar and keep coming. We'll meet up on every second and fourth Saturday every month from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you. Thanks a lot.